Every year around this time, we open up our farm to a group of people who want to get more connected with their food. And what better place to do that than right in our barn? Kind of putting the culture back in agriculture. Hi, I'm Anthony John, and welcome to the Manic Organic. Every year, we turn our barn into a fine dining establishment and donate a dinner to help support the Stratford Chef School, one of the finest culinary institutes in North America. Tonight's soup de barn is a beautiful double puree of broccoli and roasted tomatoes. I will also be serving an organic mushroom bruschetta as part of a four course meal. Today's super soup chef is my buddy Jan from Rundle's restaurant in Stratford. He really knows how to stir up trouble. I'm going to help him with the soup and he's going to take care of the main course, organic beef tenderloin and fingerling potatoes. We've got lots of vegetables to harvest and lots of barn to clean up, so I'd better get to it. In restaurant circles, our produce is the talk of the town. That's because everything we grow is totally organic. And the juicy and succulent tomatoes that we're harvesting for tonight's meal are no exception. Western society has had a love-hate relationship with tomatoes. At first, they were thought to be poisonous. Then they were thought to be an aphrodisiac. But now the love affair seems stronger than ever for flavor. These are heirloom varieties. We've got brandy wine. Now, they're never going to win any beauty contests. They're uh, prone to cracking, a little bit of splitting on the sides. But don't worry about that. They taste fabulous. Oh, we've got uh, this one with a beautiful name of Castelluto Genovese. Very poetic. They were developed at a time when flavor meant something in a breeding program rather than shipping distance. Now, one of the differences between commercial varieties and heirloom varieties is the amount of actual flesh that are in the heirloom varieties, whereas the commercial varieties in the grocery store, they've got too much of this jelly. Nobody likes to eat seeds and jelly. This is the part you want to eat. And my favorite early heirloom variety is Prudence Purple. A lot of these heirloom varieties are called green shoulders. And this green color stays with it even though it's ripe. What you're feeling for is a little bit of give on the side of the tomato, and that's when you know it's ripe. All of these heirloom varieties are great, great stars in your summer garden. And I'm sure that you're going to find one that just fits the bill for best tasting tomato you've ever tried. Mm. Pretty hard to decide, though. Hello? Hello? Yes, yes, Chris. Uh, the tomatoes are ready. Okay, I'll bring them down. See ya. On the surface, the tomatoes look just marvelous. Beneath the surface lies the biggest challenge to growing organic tomatoes, water. The key to success is finding a balance between too much and not enough water. I'm gonna show you a couple of problems with tomatoes and water, especially these heirloom varieties. They're really prone to stress due to water problems. And this first one is not enough water. This shows up, this is called blossom end rot. It's a rather ugly looking disease of tomatoes and it shows that I haven't been putting enough water on my plants or that there's a calcium deficiency in our soil. The other problem you get with these heirloom tomatoes is too much water. And that causes cracking. That's pretty, pretty simple to see. And unfortunately, the heirloom varieties, they need a lot of tender loving care to get a perfect tomato. Plant your tomatoes after the last spring frost in your area. They like warm, rich, well-drained soil that's been well rototilled before planting. You don't need to use a fertilizer because too much nitrogen will reduce the number of tomato blossoms. To get a head start on the tomato season, you can seed indoors four to six weeks before planting outdoors. Now this is a win-win situation for growing tomatoes and peppers organically. We use black plastic mulch. It's the same product as garbage bags, so if you've got a smaller garden, substitute garbage bags. Now, in addition to the plastic, you're gonna need a source of water. We use this commercial drip tape. Comes in a 12,500 foot roll, so it might be a bit big for most home gardeners. It has little emitters, every one foot apart, 
and it puts water right at the roots of the plant, so it really saves us a lot of water. Growers at home use one of these soaker hoses underneath the plastic and you can loop it around under the plastic in the garden. Just remember, like I learned the hard way, put the hose down first and then the plastic. The black plastic retains the heat. At night, the soil stays warmer and it conserves up to 70% of valuable water. Now, when you're ready to plant your tomatoes onto the plastic, take one of these really gothic looking things, don't you think? Find the hose with your hand, punch a hole in with the dibber, and put the tomato in right beside the hose as deep as you can into the ground. You really want to bury that root in. Now this seedling started in my greenhouse about four weeks ago, but now I think he's ready for the big time. Turn the water on, and this little baby's off to a head start. Dinner for 20? No problem. But we still need the broccoli for tonight's soup, so it's back to the fields for me. Our farm hands are always kept on their toes, filling the demand for our organic produce. But the big restaurants aren't our only customers. Locals often drop by the farm to pick up fresh organic produce for their own dinners. How are you? Good, good. Maybe good. You? Great. Yeah. Who wants? Well, your hands are full. Yeah. <laughs> Funny how that works. That's our stuff. Yeah. Let's go, boys. All right. Okay. See you guys. See you guys. Enough chit chat. We've got work to do. There are all kinds of hoes out there. Trapezoid hoe, collinear hoe, there's even one from Hawaii called, wait for it, a dawn hoe. <laughs> but this one's my favorite, it's called a stirrup hoe. It makes short work out of weeds in your garden. I'm gonna give it a go with my hoe. As an organic farmer, you get a really great workout hoeing in the fields, but it's worth it, especially when the result will be tonight's soup. This is quite literally half of our soup tonight. Broccoli. It's really good for you, loaded with vitamin A. It's got antioxidants in it, so it's a cancer fighter. It tastes really good too. The thing about broccoli is it's really prone to weather stress like heat and drought. We've had lots of both this summer. So my entire crop is ready all at once, unfortunately, and I've got to find a buyer for it. There's only so much broccoli one person can eat, you know. But I'm willing to give it my best try. Mm, this is at its peak of flavor right now. But great flavor like this doesn't come easily. Since we don't use pesticides or chemicals, weeds are always an issue, so we have to develop new ways of dealing with them. We don't grow anything in the greenhouses in the summer. It's just too hot. But the weeds, like crime, never takes a holiday. So what we do is plant buckwheat in the greenhouses. The buckwheat grows very, very quickly and it covers the weeds over so they don't get a chance to grow. Help suppress the weeds ready for the fall planting. At the end of the summer, we plow the buckwheat under to add organic matter to the soil. Right now the buckwheat's flowering and it's serving as a really important food source for thousands of bumblebees in this greenhouse that are coming and going through the doors. And the place smells like the world's largest buckwheat honey pot right now. It's beautiful. Oh look, it's my mushroom dealer coming in with a new shipment for tonight's dinner. Hey Andy. Good morning Anthony. How are you? Great, thanks. How are you today? Good. Great day, huh? Perfect. So what do you got for me? Shiitakes? Shiitakes and a box of maitake. Great. And I have that block that uh, for your customer wanting to grow their own mushroom. Oh, perfect. Let's have a look. I'll take that out. Oh, cool. <laughs> look at that. So what's this uh, block made out of? This is a combination of sawdust and some organic grain. Oh. And what we do is we add the mushroom to this substrate and the mushroom colonizes the entire thing and under the right environmental conditions starts to grow mushrooms. So where's the best place for people to put this in the house? A good place would be a, 
a window cell maybe in the kitchen where there's a bit of humidity yeah. and some indirect light. Well, it looks gorgeous. Yeah, I like this. Okay, I'll take this in a box of shiitakes and we'll put these in the walk-in cooler. Sounds and good. get the rest of the stuff. I love the idea of finding local people who are just pouring their heart and soul into growing something really unique and special. My friends Andy and Ryan are doing just that with these organic mushrooms. These are shiitake mushrooms and they're plump and fresh and wonderfully earthy right now. And these are maitakes or hen of the woods mushrooms and they are just pungent and moist and I think they're my favorite mushroom. The texture is incredible. It sort of gives in your mouth wonderfully. Mm. Enough of the mush, time to rush. Off to London to deliver some organic greens. A kiss for Tina and a kiss for the cook. My friend Linda Boniface, who runs this shop, is coming to dinner tonight and bringing some of her delicious organic cheeses. I have the first artichokes just for you. And cherry tomatoes, baby leeks, greens, mushrooms from the west. These are gorgeous. Good. These are new arrivals. We have cheese from Scotland from an artisan from the Isle of Mall. So we'll open it up and let you have it. Looks gorgeous. So let's see. Oh. So is this unpasteurized? Yes, it's raw milk. I haven't tasted it yet. Oh, it's unbelievable. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. Look how crumbly that is. And Anthony moist. appreciates good food. It's fun feeding him. <laughs> it's great to eat it, actually. The only thing I need now is a pillow and a blanket. Just lie down. I'm satiated. If I eat any more cheese, I won't have any room for dinner tonight. And Jan and I still have to make the soup. A double puree of roasted tomatoes and broccoli. Our barn is almost ready for its moment in the oat cuisine spotlight. And while Tina and our three kids work on the finishing touches, I'm getting together with my friend Chef Jan to prepare the soup for tonight's dinner. You know, great cooking requires a balance of magic and chemistry. And this guy, Jan Campbell Luxton, has that balance in spades. Today he's going to show us how to make our soup. Tell us what we're doing, Jan. Absolutely. What we're going to do is we're going to try and build flavor into this soup by a couple of different techniques. We're going to roast the tomatoes, we're going to roast the broccoli, and then we're going to saute off a, a base of some leeks and some onion, add a little bit of bacon and some red wine. So why don't we get okay, to it? Let's get to it. I'll do the tomatoes. And I'll take care of the garlic. Okay. These are lovely heirlooms. Put them on the cookie sheet here. So I'll just brush them with a little bit of olive oil. Okay just sort of facilitates the cooking and adds a bit of flavor and some body to the soup later on. All right, okay. so that should about do it. Good. Okay, so they're ready for the oven? Yep, I'll just stick Easy those in. That. Okay, now these are already cooled. They're done, so we're ready to process them here and we'll take the skins off mm -hmm. and we're going to drain off some of that excess liquid okay. which goes back this to what we were talking about. This is my favorite part of the show. Which part is that Anthony? Mooshing all that <laughs> gooshily lovely tomatoes around. The wonderful thing about this technique is it takes advantage of the, the incredible flavor of the tomatoes that may not be pristine and beautiful as they yeah. come off the grocery yeah. shelf. So you can use the ones that aren't going to win any beauty contests in your field. Exactly. I'll just stick those in the, uh, in the soup base. Okay, bring them back up to temperature. The base for the tomato portion of our double puree soup started with a mixture of onions, leeks, olive oil and red wine. Then we added some chicken stock. We'll just bring that up to a simmer. Okay. 
And we'll be all set to puree it in the cuisinart then, shall we? Good. Okay, you set that up while I watch you work. You do it so well. <laughs> I am a trained professional, Anthony. Why cuisinart? Why not a blender? What we're looking for is not a, a true sort of puree. Uh, what we want to do is leave some of the texture and some of the consistencies. Okay. I still want a little bit of texture in the We want in the that base. texture. We want, we want some body to it for sure. Okay. All right. Oh, wow. You can really smell the bacon coming up through that. And that's, the smokiness of the paprika also comes through. So let's have a look at this. That looks great. All right. So we'll carefully take our hot soup. Okay. And delicately, trying not to wear it, pour it into our strainer. <laughs> Good. Excellent. Okay. So we'll start forcing it through the holes here, leaving the astringent seeds behind. A slow but worthwhile process. <laughs> okay, I've got all the goodness I want to get out of that. Yeah, that looks great. Beautiful. Fantastic. Okay, now it's time to move on to the broccoli portion of the soup. We've uh, roasted these for about 10 minutes, the shallots about 15 minutes, and we're just going to barely cover the broccoli with the chicken stock. There we go, just and barely covering. Back to the stove to bring it up to heat. Absolutely. We'll bring that up. We want to make sure that uh, when you puree it, you're not blending it to death. You want, to you want some of that texture to come through, but you want to break up the fibrous coarseness of the, uh, of the broccoli. Okay, without making it without an amorphous it. mess. Exactly, a horrible mess. Excellent. So, we'll bring this across. And That's really good to go. It's really good to go. Very delicately transfer things into the cuisinart. <laughs> we will delicately pulse. Yeah. It looks like it's about ready, I think. I'll get think the pot we'll get out for you. you. <laughs> and we're off. Well done. You can see some of the thicker bits are starting to come through. We're obviously not trying to strain out absolutely everything because we're not looking for simply stock flavored by broccoli. We want the body that comes with some yep. of that vegetable and, and, uh, and the flavor as well. Okay. While it's still warm, we should put the butter in. All right, a little bit of lemon juice to season it. We'll put that back on the stove, bring it up, and again, we'll check the seasoning of both our soups, and we should be and ready we'll to go. bring them together. When we come back, we'll marry the broccoli and the tomato in our fantastic double puree. And head off to the farm and greet our guests. Okay, now for the moment of truth, folks. Jan, a trained professional, will attempt to introduce the two of these soups at the same time to avoid a complete catastrophe. Jan, take it away. All right, we'll give them a little stir. And very carefully, now the key to double soups is pouring at the same rate so that they meet in the center. Oh, 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 too soon on the tomato. And we're off. There oh, we go. you pulled it off. Oh, I, I rise to the pressure. <laughs> now, we'll just give it a little shake because our our broccoli soup's a little thick, and we'll leave you to the, the tough task job of, of garnish, oh, garnish, no. garnish. Beautifully done. Lovely. Okay, well, if the soup tastes half as good as it looks, it's going to be a winner. I got to try this. Oh man. Mm. Ah, it's delicious. I got off easy. I only had to make the soup. Jan's doing the rest of the meal back at the farm. The second course for dinner is organic beef tenderloin with fingerling potatoes done on the barbecue. We don't get much time to entertain on the farm, but when we do, we go big. We have lots of dinner invitations to repay. The soup really is a work of art. You can't imagine a more perfect dish made from ingredients fresh today from our organic fields. Ladies 
and gentlemen, I'd like to uh, to announce tonight's soup. It's a, a double puree of seasonal broccoli and roasted tomato, artfully poured by Jan Campbell Luxton. Oh, The guests at our dinner all have one thing in common. They love good organic food, and I'm no exception. Hey, you know what? Sell the SUV, divest the high-tech stock portfolio. They're overrated. Sell the plasma screen TV. No, wait, wait. Don't sell that until I finish talking. Get yourself a plot of land. Just a plot of land and grow your own vegetables. Your body will start to feel better. You'll start to look better. And soon you'll be popular around the office water cooler with all the Miss Money Pennies. Because while not all women like to talk dirty, all women like to talk about dirt. Until next time, this is John, Anthony John, on the Manic Organic. Thank you. Thank you.